This is the breaking wind from Sea Yard Nerf, which means before we do anything else in this video, we need to make a fart joke. Hello everyone, my name is Brett, and sometimes I wear a beret, and today we will be looking at the Breaking Wind from Seard Nerf, easily one of the best blaster names to come out of 2020. It's a break action, spring thunder shell firing, spring powered powerhouse. Dare I say it's the first shell fed jolt. It was designed and 3D printed and assembled by Josh and Quinn of Seard Nerf, and for full disclosure, I did purchase this blaster myself from them. They prioritized my order and gave me a discount for the prototype shell holder and sniper barrel, but that's it. And the holster too, I suppose. I'll put all relevant links to where to buy the blaster and assembly instructions from Seard Nerf in the description box below. Well, you've seen one side, now let's look at the other. When you pull the trigger all the way back, it opens the breech where you'll load your shell. And it takes all spring thunder shells. As you can see on the table, I have a litany of different shells. These specifically were printed for me by Boomstick Mods because they have my cute little logo on the side there. Close it up, prime it, and fire. Then you pull back all the way, and it opens. How does it work? Well, you can see in there, magnets. That's how it works, which is very original and very cool. And yes, <laughs> that, 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 fart blaster. This color scheme is something that I chose as well. The primary and secondary colors you see here are the standard options when you would go to purchase this blaster, and I think the quality is really great. Seard Nerf had good quality on their second wind, and they continue to show that they have good quality on their breaking wind. When you first pull the trigger back, it does fire the blaster, but when you pull all the way back and you hit this little ramp up top, that is what releases that latch, and thus the magnets with reverse polarity shoot out. So when I'm holding the blaster like this, you're not gonna see a shell fly out. If I hold it sideways, you might get a little bit more breaking action, but still a little bit of your own force to throw it out would be required. The handle is pretty beefy because there's an SF25 spring inside of there. Big handle, but big plunger volume. The T-pull at the bottom is also very familiar jolt-like. These nuts do point out a little bit. So for that reason, you'll see that I have my pull on the side because if you have it like this, your fingers might actually hit those two yeah, sharp parts. They're not super sharp, but obviously they protrude. But you can see it's as easy as just rotating 90 degrees. As you can see as well, when you prime the blaster, it does stay extended like a jolt. You can obviously just hold it and depress the catch like that. Normally you'd get a full rail of Picatinny up top, but that is currently being used, and you do get a small rail of Picatinny on the bottom, which might seem unnecessary, but there is a good use for it when it comes to the holster. The holster itself is pretty simple. You can put a belt through that loop right there, and then the little latch right here is also using magnets. That's the name of this blaster pretty much, Magnet Blaster. But it snaps really nicely into place on that bottom Picatinny. It's not going anywhere, and then you just use your pointer finger to disengage. Really nice. And away it goes. This is a pretty solid piece, and it's very similar to their second wind design. Now looking up top to the shell holder, you can see it holds four shells total, one, two, three, and then four. You can also see when that top shell slot is not being used, there are some little neon sights, one, two, and then one in the front, which can make aiming a little bit easier. And there's also a magnet back here because again, magnets are the name of the game, but you can very easily store shells on the side. Of course, in this configuration, it is mounted on the right because you can't have it on the side that opens. So if you're left-handed, I assume that it'll open on this side and there can be a configuration to hold the shells on the other. And then of course you can also just slap a shell up top. But realistically, there's a reason that this one is so open and not in two slots, and that is because of the sniper barrel, which has a magnet in the back, and that gives it a little bit more security when you're holding it like so. Let's talk about this sniper barrel as well. This is 17 30 seconds brass, about six inches long of a brass barrel in this unique shell. This is their design, Ziard Nerf's unique design. This thing is quite powerful, and we'll get to that in a minute because, yeah, it really proves that this blaster 
can do some serious performance and shows the power of this SF25 spring. And as you can see, that magnet, if you rotate it the right direction, will sit nice in place, not going anywhere with this magnet inside. Close it up. Nice and easy sniper barrel. And now you automatically have the orange tip on your blaster. And yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Now before I get into some of the firing, let's go over some of the known issues or issues that others have experienced with this blaster. One of the ones I've seen more commonly from others, but I have not experienced myself, is that they will pull the trigger to fire and they will fire and open the breech at the same time. I'll demonstrate. Insert, close, prime, and now you'll see when I fire it, the breech hasn't opened, I pull back a little bit more, and there you go, out it goes. But again, some people have seen problems where they'll fire the blaster and this will shoot out at the exact same time, which obviously means that you're not going to get the full air seal and maybe not even fire whatever projectile you were intending to fire. Now, that could be an issue with the way that the trigger and this little catch plate for the breech interfaces. Again, I haven't had the problem myself, so I can't say for certain, but it does seem that just based off of the operation, this area is very important and your trigger pull is very important with this blaster. And if it's a known issue, I assume that CR Nerf has been taking a look at it. And for example, this blaster is not one of the first to go out and now it's less of an issue. But again, I haven't experienced it myself, but I've seen others uh, kind of have that problem. Now the prime on this blaster is notable. We are talking about an SF25 spring and if you're holding it in a weird angle, it will get tiring over time. Just in my extended testing, yeah, it does get a bit tiring compared to a pump action platform of a, sing of a similar spring load. So that's just good to know. But what I have found with that strong prime, and I'll deprime it right here, because this grip is so chunky, because of the way you need to pull the trigger on this blaster too, my hands being a bit smaller, I do need to choke up on the blaster pretty high, which means that when I'm pulling down on this T-pole, I've found that my middle finger, this part of my middle finger, really rides up into this trigger guard. And after a bit of testing, it gets a little bit raw. That's continuous firing, just constant nonstop usage. But it is notable and you might find the same thing. Maybe your hands are bigger and you won't experience that kind of discomfort. Or maybe I'm just a wimp. That's completely possible too. But it is notable. That's the only discomfort I've really found with operating this blaster. And one last thing, the sniper barrel, it does have a magnet that interfaces with another magnet on the top, but it's a little less, yeah. It's a little less tight than the shells on the side, which is ironic because a shell just came loose. When you have three shells in these holders, usually it's pretty secure, but sometimes the, the tolerances are different and that may also come down to which side of these shells has more material because in some orientations like that, it's not going anywhere, but then I turn them a little bit and out those both go. So I don't know if that's a shell thing or it's the holder thing. I just mentioned this because obviously you don't want all of these shells to fall off your blaster if you're holding it somewhere, especially the sniper barrel. But overall, just minor complaints. If you're using it as a standard blaster, always holding it in your hands, you probably won't have that problem. But I'm sure what all of you are wondering is how does this blaster perform? Well, right now it's a little difficult for me to get ranged performance, but I put almost every ammo type I have over my chronograph. So please note that my aim through the chronograph is sometimes uh, terrible and that can lead to lower performance or hilariously high performance. I will say as well, a few ammo types I did not have on hand. Mega, for some reason my mega shells were in another castle and unfortunately I didn't have my rockets available too which means that I'm not sure if they work with this sniper barrel so I'm not sure if they refined this design to take rockets honestly it's something I should have asked before making this video but here we are yeah whoops a daisies meanwhile let's get to the stuff that you don't care about triple rival through a chronograph it's uh well it's not good or is it overpowered I mean, look at these performances. Quite, quite literally a game changer. 
They claim that they can do about 45 feet with three rival rounds and about 50 feet with two rival rounds. And with a single rival round, I found anywhere between 60 and 80 feet per second. They claim 90 feet per second. I can see that just because the way that you load rival rounds into a shell, it really depends on the rival round itself. If it's thick foam, thin foam, um, how hard you push it into the shell. But realistically, you're not loading one rival round, you're loading three for a small spread of rival. Another useful chronograph test, uh, two half darts. I didn't try four half lengths, but I did try it with two, and the results are still uh, largely inaccurate, but I did get a half dart lodged sideways, so that's funny. They claim with two half darts you can do about 50 feet, and four half darts will do about 30 feet. Again, no reason to chronograph this except I felt like trying and that didn't pay off at all. Now, ultra darts. They had no claims about ultra because why would you? But what I found was upper 70s and all the way up to 100. And that's pretty good, I guess. That's low ultra performance if you like ultra. Dart fit definitely has an effect on these ones because ultra darts fitting into these radioactive spring thunder shells are quite a pain, although sometimes they're not. So yeah, that's probably what does it. Boomco. No claims were actually made for Boomco, and I obviously didn't try triple Boomco across the chronograph because the previous results would say that's useless information. But with a single Boomco straw, I got in the 80s to 90s FPS wise, which I'd be very curious to see if that's actually an accurate shot. Could be fun to use. And of course, single shots. Now they claim with one full length dart, you could do up to 90 FPS. Some full lengths could do that, uh, many fell below due to the shell seal. I don't know what was wrong with my single dart shells here. Some of them required a bit of an extra click to make sure that it was fully sealed. So sometimes they did pretty well, and sometimes they didn't. And this was also a mixture of different kinds of darts, which I will be honest, I kind of forget which was which. Sorry about that. And then single half darts were about the same story. It really depended on the seal. Sometimes you could do in the 90s and then sometimes the shots were really bad and they were like 60s. But realistically, if you're gonna be using a single dart, you're using the sniper barrel. And this is where the FPS readings really shine. This is the main attraction. And 17 30 seconds means that most full lengths with thick foam will not work. Half lengths and full lengths with wide dart heads will also not work. So that means no waffles, no AccuStrike, even elites were kind of a hit and miss. Some of the worn elites could be used with okay performance, but again, they're elite darts, so don't guarantee that you're going to actually hit anything. And full length pro darts also don't work, just too thick of foam, but full length bamboos do. So if you've had some full length bamboo darts sitting around, yeah, those will work just fine. Typical performance was 140s to 150s. Quite impressive, quite powerful. And of course, the pro darts, the half length pro darts, could often do 160s. Really, really impressive. Again, this barrel might be able to fire rockets, but I can't say for certain. I'm really kicking myself that I didn't get rockets tested for this one. Not that you would have gotten a chronograph result for it. Well, if you're already invested in the Spring Thunder shell ecosystem, then I can highly recommend a Breaking Wind. If you're interested in getting into the Spring Thunder world, then this might be the first good step. I realize shells are a bit gimmicky. They can obviously offer something unique by holding different kinds of ammo and different quantities of ammo, but it is still gimmicky. You still need to be able to print shells or purchase printed shells. Sometimes shells can break, yada, yada, yada. It's not for everyone. And I completely understand that if you don't like shells, then this blaster is probably not for you. You can just use one shell in the front and then front load it forever, which is a nice feature. But again, the whole gimmick is using shells out of this. And I can highly recommend the sniper barrel as well. I, yeah, definitely look into getting this one if you are going to get yourself a breaking wind because that is a pretty powerful piece of hardware. Fully assembled, this base blaster costs about $90. I think the complete kit to assemble is about 60 and the hardware with print files is about 35. Those prices are subject to change. The shell add-ons would be extra and the sniper barrel shell holder um, and the holster I think are also pending in cost. So don't take all those prices you know, at face value. Any thoughts, suggestions, what else do you want to see from Seayard Nerf? Leave them in the comment section down below. More fart jokes. Yeah, we're mature here. Bring those fart jokes in, because we need more of that. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and I'll see you later.